Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another laser cutting video. You guys seem to really enjoy these, and some of you may know that I use a Creality Falcon 2 for all of my projects, but today I'm actually here to review a new upgraded laser cutter from Creality, the Falcon 2 Pro. Now, right off the bat, I just want to say that this video isn't sponsored by Creality. Uh, they did provide the machine for review purposes, but they don't have any creative control over this video, and I'm free to say what I like. And basically, today I'm going to talk about some of the upgrades that the Pro version has over the previous machine and how those might be useful for anyone thinking about getting into laser cutting themselves, especially for use with model railways as well, seeing as that's what this channel is mostly about. And then later on, I'll actually put the machine to the test by making something for the layout I'm currently working on. So be sure to stick around if you want to see how that goes too. Now, at its core, the Pro version is very much an upgrade of the existing Falcon 2, which is great because that's a very strong starting point. But there are several hefty improvements on this machine, uh, as you may have noticed, the built-in enclosure for starters. That does require some assembly before using the machine though, so let me show you how I put all this together. It's really just the enclosure on the Falcon 2 Pro that needs some assembly, and this is all documented in the instructions that you get with the machine. The main structure is formed by these two ribs and a central section that spans between them. You may also notice that the central section has a camera module installed into it, which I'll be able to use later on to monitor things while the laser is active, as well as lining up designs on the material. And the sides just all bolt together using the provided bolts and allen key. With one side done, the second side is then attached in the same way. We then get this tinted material which slots into the edges of the frames. This is a little tricky as it did have a tendency to pop out as I was trying to thread it through, but I got there in the end. There's then another section that attaches onto the bottom to hold it in place. On the opposite side we have another of these tinted panels and this will actually form the retractable door used to access the bed of the machine. And in case you are wondering, these tinted panels block the light from the laser, meaning that I won't have to wear the special glasses while using it. Again, there's another thicker bottom section to be bolted on and this also houses an LED light. This is the main frame of the Falcon 2 Pro, and you can see out of the box this is already assembled with all the electronics, motors and belts, so all the complicated stuff is already done for us. There's also a nice tray that slots into the bottom and that catches any debris and stops you from engraving whatever surface you're working on too. Next up we need to install the laser module itself. This slots down onto the mount and can then be fastened in place by tightening up the two screws. There's two additional things to plug in, the first being the air pipe that comes from the air assist. The second is the control cable itself which just plugs in nice and easily. And these cables can then just be neatly routed together so that the laser still has all the movement it needs. Instead of needing a separate honeycomb bed for this laser, Creality actually provide a set of rails which will support the material while cutting or engraving. You can also adjust the spacing of these as well, so you can have them closer together if you want. The enclosure can then just be placed on top of the main structure. There's two more tinted side panels to be bolted on as well, this will strengthen the enclosure and also attach it to the main part of the Falcon 2 Pro as well. I will say that some of the holes didn't line up perfectly, I had to do some adjusting and wiggle things around a bit to get everything to fit, but again I got there eventually. I then plugged in the cables for both the LED light bar and also the built in extractor fan. The air pump also has a control cable to be hooked up and the actual air pipe too. Aside from that though, I'm pretty sure this is exactly the same air assist unit from the previous Falcon 2. 
Finally, I'll plug in the main power cable for the machine. And with that, we're done. So let's take a look at some of the features. So first off, the core of the Falcon 2 Pro is pretty much the same as the original Falcon 2. That's not a bad thing though, as that was a pretty great machine and now we have a few extras on it too. Obviously, the most notable thing is the built-in enclosure we just added to the top, and that'll keep all the nasty fumes contained while cutting. You can see that the main frame of the Pro is also closed too, so we won't have anything escaping from underneath either. To remove all the fumes, we actually have an extractor fan built into the enclosure itself. You can also choose what side you want this to be on as well. There is a control switch for this, so we can either have the fan on all of the time, or have the fan be controlled automatically by the machine, which is a really nice feature. There's a second switch to control the LED light bar too. This runs across the front on the inside, so that you can light up whatever you're working on, just for a better view through the tinted panels. I also really like the support rails and the tray for catching debris. Previously, you'd have to buy a separate honeycomb bed to cut things, but with a self-contained system, that isn't needed anymore. And the tray will make cleaning out the debris really easy. And something I'm personally really excited about is the built-in camera. Now, obviously, this is great for me because I can use it to get some inside shots when I film these videos. But you can also use it to line up your designs on the material you're cutting, which is a really handy feature if you're cutting on sheets that you've already half used. Finally, I just want to take a look at the laser module. I think these are the same modules as before, but this time Creality have actually sent me the 40 watt version rather than the 22 watt version. Now obviously that's a more powerful laser, but the actual line it creates will be a little bit thicker as a result. So with this machine, Creality actually send out a second 1.6 watt module too, and you can use that for really fine engraving. And that isn't something they've just done for me, this comes with all of the 40 watt versions as standard. As if that wasn't enough though, you may notice on top of the 40 watt laser module there's a button with two LEDs labelled precise and normal. If I press down this button, you'll see that normal has gone out, and so in precise mode, this 40 watt laser is now running as a 22 watt laser, and that's so that we can get slightly finer lines while still being able to cut through thin material. This is really cool because it means that with the 40 watt version, you're actually getting three different lasers which will cover you for all kinds of projects. It really is the best of all worlds. So in general, there's a lot to love about the new Falcon 2 Pro, but how does it stack up to its predecessor? So comparing the two machines side by side, there are some obvious pros and maybe some cons that you need to be aware of too. Starting off with the pros though, the biggest has to be the built-in enclosure. Um, yeah, you can get this enclosure for the previous version, that is something that you have to buy separately though, and it's essentially a big tent that sits over the machine. The Falcon 2 Pro though has this enclosure actually built into it, which is great for home users like myself who need to be more mindful of exhaust fumes. It's also more airtight as well, and you can also see in from all sides as well. You can see in from the side views, whereas the previous version you can only really see in from the front and on the top. Uh, and it's also really easy to open up and grab whatever you're working on as well. And I think it has a much stronger fan in there as well. The fumes seem to clear out pretty much straight away after a job has finished cutting, where with this one I know I have to leave it for about five minutes to make sure it is completely clear before opening it up. It's also really nice to have a camera built into the enclosure too. Um, yes, you could have done this with the previous version by just using a webcam, but rigging it up would have been a bit of a pain, and the way it's just part of the machine here is great. Uh, the other thing as well is that the enclosure actually ends up making the machine smaller too, now that it's part of the frame as opposed to just sitting over the top of it. Um, side by side you can see that the older version does take up a lot more space, both width and depth and also height as well. Uh, so yeah, the Pro version is a lot more compact and streamlined in comparison. Again, this is great for those like me who have limited space for a laser cutter, especially if you already have a model railway to house somewhere as well. And I will say that the whole machine just feels more robust and solid than my original Falcon 2. That's not to say that this machine was bad, but this just feels like a step up from that. That said, there are some cons. Uh, the main one being that with the enclosure now forming part of the frame, you can't really cut large materials on this. Um, previously with the open style frame of the Falcon 2, you, you could have a large sheet of material and cut one end of it, slide the whole thing along, and then continue the cutting process. But 
that isn't really an option here with the solid sides. Uh, the other thing about the Pro version as well is that it's a lot less portable with this built-in enclosure. Um, now, that's not going to be an issue for everyone, but certainly for those that don't have a permanent setup space for their laser cutter, uh, you might be better off with the original Falcon 2, which can be packed away more easily. Uh, you know, this tent is basically, it's mostly fabric. You can just fold it down and the laser cutter itself is flat as well. So you can just stack that against a wall or even hang it from a wall or something. Um, as I showed earlier as well, you do need to do some assembly with this machine as well. Uh, the original Falcon 2, you could just slot in the laser module and power the machine on and away you go. With this one, there is a little bit more work to do beforehand. Although I will say that all the complicated work like the motors and the belts and everything, that's all still done for you. Uh, speaking about needing to build the enclosure too, I did find some minor build issues. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I find that some of the bolts were, didn't quite fit properly or they, they needed adjusting. Uh, the retractable panel on the front here doesn't quite close properly on one side. And of course, this might be a construction issue that is my fault, but I have taken the whole thing apart again to try and figure out why this is happening. And it just seems like it's not a very good fit. However, all said and done, I do think these are very minor things overall, and the Pro version is still a massive improvement in my eyes over the original Falcon 2. I think both machines will suit different people in different situations though, so it's just something to be aware of when you're making the choice. But that's enough talking, let's actually put this new machine to the test and see what it can do. So this is my first project for the Falcon 2 Pro, and I'm not trying to do anything too complicated here, just a little hut in TT120 scale which I designed really quickly. It's essentially four walls, a couple of roof sections and then some windows and a door. Nothing fancy, but it'll give me a good idea of what this laser is capable of. So let's get the Falcon 2 Pro switched on and start cutting. With the project fully cut and engraved, you can see the parts have come out really nicely, including that brick pattern which in TT is really tiny. The assembly for this will be really simple as I've got four walls to glue together. You may notice as well I've cut around the brickwork so that the different sides will interlock with each other at the corners. I can then join the other two walls together as well. And just in case you were wondering, I decided to cut this on the precise mode since I was only using 1.5mm wood for this. And I'm going to glue the windows and door in place at this point too. If this was a more complicated build, I would probably paint these first and then fit them afterwards, but for something simple like this, I'm not too bothered. Next up, I'll glue the two sections of roofing together. With the two corners of the hut now dry, I'll glue these together to make up my main four walls. And now I'm just adding some PVA glue to the top ridges and this is so I can fix the roof in place. That's all the assembly done and you can see everything fit together really nicely so top marks for the Falcon 2 Pro which did a great job of cutting my design. To paint this up I've given it a quick coat of primer and now I'll paint the brickwork in a darkish brown colour all over. The roof is then given a base coat of grey for the slates. 
You may notice as well I've added a tiny strip of masking tape along the top joint to create the ridge too. Next up I'll paint a thick coat of white paint over the brown I just added to the brickwork. The idea here is that this will settle into the grooves created by the laser cut brickwork. I can then use a finger to wipe away the majority of the paint, leaving behind only the mortar courses which will highlight the bricks really well. To finish up I'll just give the window frames a quick coat of white paint too. And I'll reuse the grey I mixed up for the roof on the door. The finishing touches can then be added just using a fine brush to put a tiny amount of metallic paint on the letterbox and keyhole. Quite why a small hut like this would have a letterbox I'll have to leave that up to your imagination. Finally I'll just add some black to the window on the door too. And that is this very quick but no less satisfying build complete. Here you can see the finished hut on the TT layout that I'm currently building and it very much looks the part. I don't know where this building will go yet but I'm sure we'll find room for it somewhere. As for the Falcon 2 Pro, I think it's a fantastic laser cutter. It's obviously very capable at producing even tiny kits which is fantastic and I really like the new features on this upgraded design. Of course, if you fancy picking up one yourself, I'll pop a link in the description below because I really do think a laser cutter can be a useful tool when building a model railway. This little building, for example, took an afternoon to go from the initial design to completed, so it definitely gives you a lot of possibilities. Again, thank you so much to Creality for sending over the Falcon 2 Pro for this review, and that's going to be it for today's video. If you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button as it really does help the channel out, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!